Well, somewhere out there is a 40 pound mirror. Don't know where he is, can't see him. And I'm still trying to catch floppy tail, believe it or not. Lost a couple of fish in the last week, which both felt quite heavy, could have been him. No idea, but uh, I've caught a few fish as well, so I'm, I'm on track still. Just got to wait for a, a little bit of luck to come my way. And eventually, hopefully I'll get him. But this is what I'm waking to most mornings now, before I pull off for work. Thick fog, a lot of moisture in the air, a bit of rain, a bit of dampness. Um, feeding times have switched as well for this time of the year. It's been mainly late evening when I come here after work. Um, during the summer months it was first thing in the morning, but I can't seem to catch anything about now. It seems to all be coming when I come back in an afternoon from about five o'clock onwards till, uh, till about nine o'clock at night. Just uh, probably coming into the swim and feeding on the bait during the day, getting a little bit of confidence up. And then I'm sticking out single up baits when I get here from work. And uh, I'm, I'm getting one or two fish because uh, quite quickly straight after casting out. Um, nothing big yet come away. 28, 12, my biggest. Um, that's my biggest one of the autumn campaign so far. Fish known as the football. Cracking old fish. It's one that I wanted to catch when I first got here. Um, but sooner or later, I know Floppy will turn up. He just uh, just got to bide my time. Um, it's look, it is looking like I'm going to have to join again next year, though, to try and get him. I mean, he hasn't been out for a few weeks. So he could be really, really big at the moment. He could be, you know, 41, 42 pounds because he, he likes his bait. He's, uh, he's a big old muncher. Um, sooner or later, somebody will catch him anyway. But that is a lovely scene. <laughs> Won't be able to see much, but uh, it's definitely atmospheric and it's definitely nice to be on the bank in the autumn and welcome it in. Just making the first brew of the day. Um, don't know whether you can see that, it's not very good light at the moment, but uh, that old floppy tail in the sack down there. Five o'clock this morning, we're on uh, six o'clock now, so buzzing. Just capturing the moment on the video camera. Just got him in the net, just having a cup of tea. Right, 20th of September, and I finally got the one that I wanted. He's down there in the sack. You can just see the orange marker. A uh, bit of a productive night last night. Just came down for the overnighter, uh, left work, arrived here probably about quarter to six, something like that. I was hoping to get into that swim opposite where you can just see that white van. That's where Mike White is. I've been putting a lot of bait in there, and uh, was hoping to get in there because it's been doing me regular fish. But uh, Mike was in there, so I had to look elsewhere. But the lake's quite busy actually, you can't really see it from here, but there's actually six other anglers on, including myself. So I thought, right, next best bet to uh, where I want to be is directly opposite. So I uh, got in the swim and saw a fish roll just down here to my left, probably about 30 yards out, which was encouraging. It looked quite a big fish as well. But uh, got the rod set up, put one out there to the left and uh, got two rods out in the middle, or just short of the middle where I've been putting bait, it's not far from where I've been baiting my spots, but uh, it was close enough. And uh, right hand rod went about half ten, quarter to eleven, with a 22 pound common on. Uh, took a quick picture of that one because I've not seen it before. And then at first light, the left hand rod's gone. Just tightened up, nice and heavy fight, plodded around. Thought it might have been a catfish at first, because it was that plodding. And then uh, when I got eventually down into the reeds down here, because I had to wade out for it, I could see it was a carp and uh, got itself tangled in the reeds, freed it from that. It then plodded around out in the middle, in which time I did see that it was floppy. So the old legs went to jelly a little bit and uh, eventually rolled in front of the net and I scooped him up and uh, yeah, let's have a look at him. I've uh, weighed him in at 40 pound 10, so mega chuffed, mega happy and puts the final chapter together as regards my uh, fishing on this venue. And it is a fantastic water here at at Worldview, really enjoyed it. Uh, finally got my target fish, so let's have a quick look at him. Right, this is the rig that I used then to catch uh, Floppy. Dead simple, really, and uh, no different to the rigs that I use wherever I go, really. Uh, 15 pound mono straight through, 
Uh, no leaders on here because of the, the weed really. I always find that a leader knot or any type of knot in this kind of weed that you've got in this water always clogs up the knot and causes you problems through your tip ring. So I've got no leader on at all. And uh, first thing you come to is a Nash safety clip. And uh, fishing really light here today. This is just a one and a half ounce lead because uh, a lot of silt out in front of me and uh, don't want to use anything heavy because it plugs in too much and uh, I like a nice light presentation. And then the rest of the rig is uh, pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, it's no different to what I always use. I've been using a lot of trigger link this last uh, last few months but uh, I'd one or two get cut off in this weed because it is quite razor sharp, there's obviously a few mussels that's clinging to it and so I've stepped up to, this is the missing link, it's just the inner core of it though, I've stripped off all the coating and you're left with this lovely nice and tough um, supple braid which is fantastic and ideal for the presentation that I like to, to use because I am a big fan of bottom baits and uh, bottom baits with supple rigs always tend to go really well and I've got a Fang X on there, that's a size 6 with a liner liner some shrink tube on it and then uh, a nice tight hair there's no hook bait on here at the moment but I've been using a 16mm Scopex squid and then just tipping it with this mutant on the end and basically that's it, that's the presentation kept a lot of bottom baits going out there kept a lot of 16 millers and some crushed 18s and 20s going out just kept baiting and eventually uh, the big end has fallen foul of it and it's tripped up on such a dead simple rig just to prove that you don't always need these complicated rigs and setups to catch these big ends finally got him in the end there he is the old legend of the lake, floppy tail, 40 pound 10 ounces. There was times when I thought I wasn't going to catch him, but perseverance pays off in the end, let's put it that way. Absolutely buzzing with that, absolutely buzzing, because I'm off to Rainbow Lake in France next week, and uh, to catch that just before I'm going has really made my, really made my autumn, really made me autumn. Absolutely Sometimes buzzing. Sometimes you can't push and you sit there and you think, is it going to happen for me? Is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? You keep waiting, you keep asking yourself, and then eventually when it does, it really does mean so much more. It's my 39th fish out of Worldview, so absolutely buzzing to have to have caught him. I mean, to have caught him over 40 as well. It's just even better. Couldn't have asked for a better end. Fantastic way to end at Worldview. Fantastic summer, fantastic autumn. Really, really enjoyed it. Lovely place. Turning shot, and that's all. Oh, he looks big. Here he goes, floppy tail. Finally got him.